Hi everyone, welcome to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video I'll be talking about my Airhead composting toilet. Composting toilets, like the one you see behind me here, have become very popular with RVers in the last few years, and they're now finding their way onto boats, and that's for some very compelling reasons. So why did I switch from a traditional marine head to a composting toilet? Well first, I've been having a really frustrating time with my holding tank. So first off, I've gone through several macerator pumps over the years. Uh, the one I have won't prime properly. Um, I don't have the space for um, a different pump. So I've been fighting with this pump for years. Um, and that's when, you, when you're able to legally pump overboard, you know, offshore. And if not, uh, then you've got to run around trying to find a pump out. And in Canada, the facilities are nowhere near as good as in the US. They're slowly getting better, but we just don't have the pump out facilities available. So now I have a full holding tank and I can't pump it out. And it's been a huge problem. Next is the smell. I have gone through multiple additives, deodorants, everything else. I've replaced my hoses. I've done everything I can. And still there's holding tank smell, no matter what you do. I cannot get rid of that holding tank smell. And if you've had a boat for any length of time and you've been dealing with a holding tank, I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about. Next, um, there was the benefit of getting rid of the holding tank, which means I've got tons more storage under my port settee. And then finally, um, I got rid of my uh, two extra seacocks. So the inlet and the exit, or the outlet, um, are now plugged. So I have two fewer seacocks, and that's always a good thing. There are several brands available out there, and after talking with fellow cruisers who have installed composting toilets on their boats, as well as reading online reviews, I decided to go with the Airhead. The user manual that came with the Airhead was not as complete as I would have liked, so I watched a few YouTube videos by people who had installed composting toilets, specifically the Airhead, into their RVs. But still, there were some details missing that I had to figure out on my own. So I thought that I would document my steps that I went through, and if you decide to put one of these into your boat or RV, hopefully this will be a help. After removing my old job school marine head, the first thing I had to do was remove these hoses and fill the holes left behind. Filling the small mounting holes was relatively easy, I used my Dremel to sand and chamfer the holes, and I filled them with JB Weld Water Weld, a waterproof epoxy putty. Next, I closed and plugged the seacocks that allowed water into and out of the head. This is one of the biggest advantages for me in moving to a composting toilet. I now have only two seacocks to worry about. Plugging these large holes where the hoses were proved to be a bit more of a challenge. I decided to glass them in. But first, I needed some sort of backing. A sailing friend had suggested gluing popsicle sticks to the underside of the floor, and this worked like a charm. Once the glue was dry, I added a bit of fiberglass cloth and some resin to seal the gaps between the popsicle sticks, and then proceeded to add several more layers of cloth and resin until the hole was completely filled. Now for the installation of the airhead. Let's start with the various components. This is the manual that comes with it, and I found that it lacked the depth of information that I would have liked, which is part of the reason why I made this video. Having said that, it does cover the important stuff. This is the solids tank with the agitator and the included cover for removing the tank to empty it. This is the seat, and you can see that there are seals on the toilet lid as well as the seat. This is the handle that spins the agitator, and it is available in left or right configurations. The toilet must be vented, and the part on the right of the screen, called the cuff, is where the vent hose attaches. The screen fits on the opposite side and allows airflow into the toilet while keeping the bugs out, which I have heard can be a problem. This split ring is glued to the cuff inside the toilet to secure it in place. More on that coming up. 
This is an inline screen that prevents bugs from coming in via the vent tube. This is the housing for the small fan that vents the toilet. And this is how the fan is oriented in the housing so that it moves the air in the right direction, out of the boat. These are some of the accessories included in the box. Mounting screws, a cap for the liquids tank, lid for the solids tank that I've already mentioned, and paper compostable filters. How to use the filters is covered in the manual, so I will not get into that in this video. In addition to the water weld, I also used plastic weld and butyl tape. I was planning to use silicone to seal the vent housing to the hull, but used butyl tape instead. I used PVC pipe primer and glue to cement those parts that called for a permanent bond. Airhead and several YouTube videos I watched recommended this cocoa choir brick or peat moss. More on this coming up. Now for the installation itself. I drilled practice holes in this particle board to test fit various components like the vent hose and fan housing. This is the clamshell cover recommended by the Marine Supply Store where I bought my airhead. I had to drill a hole in the bulkhead for the vent hose and after carefully measuring inside and out, I drilled a small pilot hole to make sure I was drilling in the right spot. I wanted to drill from the inside out for a clean finish and I really did not want to drill through wires and fuel lines by accident. Close enough. Here is the vent hose as it exits the toilet. I drilled a hole with a hole saw and glued in a piece of PVC plumbing conduit for a nice finish. I sealed the conduit with JB Weld Plastic Weld. This is the vent hose cuff in place. Notice the O-ring which is not yet seated. This is the split ring glued to the cuff to secure it in the toilet. Make sure the cuff itself turns and is not glued to the toilet. When the glue has cured, the O-ring is seated. Next came marking the floor for the solid tank's mounting brackets. I used a small piece of butyl tape to stick the mounts to the floor in the right place. I marked the holes, drilled 11 64ths pilot holes, and screwed the mounts down. I sealed the holes for the mounting brackets with butyl tape. Next, I located the holes for the mounting brackets for the liquids tank. The solids tank must be in place to do this. Here are all four brackets, sealed and screwed down securely. My head is located towards the stern of the boat, and I led my vent hose out to the transom. Here is the vent hose filter where I can get at it to clean it if needed. Finally, I came to the fun part of drilling the hole in the side of the boat for the fan. I sealed the edges of the hole with epoxy, mounted the fan inside the boat against the transom, and installed the clamshell cover. As I mentioned earlier, Airhead recommends these cocoa bricks. Personally, I have not been happy with how they perform, and have switched to peat moss, which worked great. Here is the solids tank with the peat moss ready for its first deposit. And here is the fully installed Airhead composting toilet. So how's the composting toilet working out? Well, I've had it for three months now and we've been living aboard and we've had to empty it twice. We're now due for a third coming up, but it's been pretty good. I have no regrets whatsoever. Um, emptying it twice or now three times in almost four months is a lot less than I would have had to do with my holding tank. And it's a lot less work. You just dump the compost into a garbage bag and then get rid of it. And you can dump it anywhere, anytime. It's a lot less work than having to pump out a holding tank. The only con that I have, if you, if it's a con at all, is that the liquids tank uh, does get drained or uh, emptied um, every two days. So that's a bit more work. But all things considered, I have absolutely no regrets. Um, I love the fact that there's no smell whatsoever and I can dump it anytime I want with no problems. So. Hopefully by the end of this video, um, this will be my steps that I went through will help you. And if, uh, if not, if you still have any comments or questions, just uh, drop them down in the comments below and I'll do what I can to uh, see if I can find some answers for you or to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, why not give us a quick thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again in our next episode where I'll be going over lowering the mainsail single-handed. Till then, I wish you all fair winds 
and following seas.